Hello and welcome to Real Watchers Movie Club. My name is Garrett. And I'm Kevin. And we are your hosts. Movie Club is a show where we pick a movie every week, similar to a book club, and discuss it. On today's show, we're covering the classic comedy Groundhog Day. So stay tuned for all that and more coming up on Movie Club. Released in 1993, Groundhog Day was directed by Harold Ramis and stars Bill Murray, Andy McDowell, and Chris Elliott. A narcissistic, self-centered weatherman finds himself in a time loop on Groundhog Day, and the day keeps repeating until he gets it right. It is currently number 232 on IMDb's Top 250 and has a 3.9 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Before we dive into our thoughts though, uh, we do want to issue a spoiler warning. We will be discussing the film's plot points, twists, and ending, uh, and so much more here on the show. If you haven't seen the film yet, we'd recommend watching it first and then coming back so you can discuss it with us. Stay tuned to the end of the show though to find out what movie we'll be covering next week so you'll have time to watch it. Alrighty Kevin, quite a change of pace on this one. Um, as this is a comedy and not the usual thriller action kind of sci-fi film we've been covering lately. Um, what is your history with Groundhog Day? And had you seen it before this? Uh, what's your history? No history. I've heard about it and I've seen it on Netflix and I knew it was a time loop uh, movie um, and uh, that it was a comedy as well. So this is my first time watching it and we'll get into... Uh, my stuff later awesome yeah for me uh, I had seen this movie years and years ago um, but I didn't remember its ending I didn't really remember anything about it so it was as good as a first time watching for me really uh, it was first time really watching it and paying attention to everything going on so kind of treating it as a first time viewing so uh, what are your overall thoughts Kevin uh, this is your first time watching it I'm counting it as my first time uh, what what's your like your overall thoughts before we dive a little deeper um, I thought this movie was going to be more comedy than it was. It's under the comedy um, comedy category, um, and I was hoping to hear a little bit more comedy in it. But it wasn't bad. It was, have I seen better um, time loop movies? Yes, I have. But it was still a good, for the age of this movie, it was still a very good movie with a main character who you actually despise at first and then you like at the end um and is it is it bill murray yes it's bill murray okay good um yeah bill murray's i mean he's a great actor just period so him having his it, this is basically his movie no one else is in it except for some supporting characters that to be honest didn't really care about so it was just if they just called this Bill Murray, I think it would have been the same movie. <laughs> I, I love it. Um, I'm in the much the same boat. I think this movie is fine. I think it has its moments. I think it's it's got some genuinely funny moments, mostly with Bill Murray. Um, it's also got some profoundly deep moments, too. Like, it's it's got a deeper level of meaning to it. And I think once you kind of realize... It, it is a comedy at the end of the day, but I feel like once you realize what it's about, maybe on a second viewing you might get a lot more out of it than on a, on a first time, uh, for sure. Um, but I do think that this movie is, it's fine. Uh, it, Bill Murray, Bill Murray's Bill Murray. He's amazing. One of the funniest actors ever. Um, and he really carries this movie. There is really no one else here that is as interesting or as funny or as layered as him. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I totally agree with what you're saying, that the supporting cast just does not hold up enough weight to what they're doing yeah i mean the the guy that carries the camera his name's maybe larry <laughs> yeah maybe. i don't know his name Could, couldn't even tell you that's the thing and he's like one of the main three or main two side characters i can't even tell you his name do i remember the girl's name no i don't so i mean the whole thing is his he's trying to he's very narcissistic narcissistic there you go which um i can i can see some news anchors and weatherman be the oh my gosh i'm going to this no yeehaw town in the middle of nowhere to see um a groundhog see if he sees a shadow whoop-de-doo 
like that stuff and i would feel the same way but it would be kind of a more of a cool thing for me but he's been in the movie he says he's been doing this for what two to three years every time he goes down there something like that yeah yeah and um he's like oh great i get to do it again and everybody's excited and everybody's and he's like it's the same basically the same damn thing every year either he sees the shower shower shadow or he doesn't and if i feel like he wants to do something more on the news not just be a news uh the weatherman he wants to be like the main anchor person telling the big hit stories but they just throw him these little stories and he'll go out and do this for us stuff like that yeah and i think there's talk of him really getting kind of like national syndication or something like that or like a position at like cnn or something Mm -hmm. similar where it's like a national news network um and i think that again that's really what his character is aiming for and he's to be honest he's a douchebag about it you know he's Mm -hmm. he treats people like crap and that's that really lends into a lot of the kind of story behind this film right it's you know at, at its core this you could look at this as a time loop comedy you could look at this as you know like any other like you know happy like was it happy death day is similar to this um the indie comedy palm springs is sort of similar to this as well whereas this is actually a, a movie about someone stuck in purgatory like they they're they're forced to relive or you know other kind of spiritual uh things of the same kind of velocity i guess is the word um mm-hmm. but like you're stuck to relive the same day over and over again until you get it right you're basically expunging the bad parts about you to become a better person mm-hmm. which at its core is a great message and i think that bill murray again plays the douchebag turned you know good person really well yeah it's just and then, everyone around him that's just like a, a cardboard cutout he they they literally could put different different woman and different man for his sub characters mm-hmm. wouldn't change the whole thing I yeah. wouldn't have been like, oh man, that's that's a Gal Gadot over there. I would just be like, it's the person that he likes and wants to be with, but he can't get to her because she thinks that he's a bad person and that he he's like not happy and stuff like that. And he tries to get her like in bed before like they actually like knew each other and stuff. Yeah. So that was kind of that was kind of it wasn't weird. But it was just like, oh, he's moving fast, pretty much. Yeah, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of discussion about how, like, you know, he like because initially he tries to romance her um, with the express purpose of getting her into bed, or like, you know, like he actually does go on more like romantic outings with her as he goes on, but then he fails at it and he gives up, which I was like, mm-hmm. oh wow, okay, they like this could actually ditch that sort of like stereotypical storyline where the guy has to get the girl kind of a thing mm-hmm. um, but then they revisit it at the end and I think um, obviously when they revisit it at the end he's a better person it's much more um, earned it's much more uh, natural because he's not doing it for the purpose of being with her like she legitimately just falls in love with him mm-hmm. over the well, and, of then, the and then him basically committing suicide for maybe 15 minutes or something like that um and he him realizing that life is worth more than just trying to get with somebody and then not actually loving her or protecting her and like very sincere about the woman that he wants to be with so it showed that a little bit as in she rejected him so many times he felt so bad that he would have to kill himself but he always wakes up Mm -hmm. in the same day the same thing happens and it's it's just saying like don't i what i got from this movie was if someone says no like girl guy whoever you want to date it's life's not over there's always bigger fish in the sea um you might come come across somebody that's better than that last person um stuff like that so that's what i got from it was just don't don't throw your life away for a person um because you can still find that person even if it is the same person that makes any sense (laughs) 
<laughs> sure. Yeah, I think I understand what you're going for. And mm -hmm. I do want to touch on the thing that I had forgotten about this movie that you brought up, which is the entire sequence where he keeps killing himself. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was not expecting the movie to go that dark. And it works. Because, like, no matter how good a person, how stable of a person mentally you are, you're going to do the same thing. You're stuck in that time loop for what feels mm -hmm. like an eternity. You're going to try every possible thing to break out of it. And so it, it does hit that dark chord. And then it does also hit the point of, like, I'm a god. Like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think those things. And, and that's where I think the strongest part of this movie is, is its script. Is its screenplay. Because they're touching on so many of the different things that would actually happen to you or to I or anyone we know in this situation yeah i mean he literally goes i am god i can do anything i want because the next day i'm gonna wake up in that same bed with that same song playing with the same alarm clock and the girl that owns the hotel she's gonna ask me the same damn thing do you want some coffee yeah i would my, my first assumption wouldn't be i'm a god it would probably be i'm immortal but then i'm also yeah. just stuck like you know and, and it makes you think, too, like, there's eventually the part where he is going through everyone in the diner. And he is talking about every single little person. And knowing the details. And you clearly, and maybe not so clearly, but, like, you understand he has been there for who knows how long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, and just to, just to prove to his co-worker that he is actually living this day over and over again and that was one of the coolest parts in the movie he mm -hmm. if that's a oneer, that's a that should that was really cool how it was done him just talking hey there's susan she does this there's her boys this way and went to this college and then the co-workers like ah that's just a hunch she it was just a lucky guess and then he goes just goes through all of the uh the diner and it's like she's like oh my gosh like he's actually really knows everybody here mm -hmm. i mean no one's ever going to fully understand the grasp or understand or grasp the magnitude of what he's going through mm -hmm. no one's going to like and it's it's moments like those that are like the attempts to reach out to people which are really fascinating mm -hmm. um but i do want to kind of change course because we this is kind of the first movie in a while that we've been a little bit more I, I would say critical of. Um, mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and talk about the thing that we both really have trouble with, and that's the supporting cast. Um, for me, really, it, it is the two supporting characters that are supposed to lend some sort of, you know, support to uh, to Bill Murray or to the character's name, which is Phil. Um, and I want to first talk about Andy McDowell because for the longest time. I watch a lot of movies, and I know a lot of different actress, actresses and actors and performers. I never remember her name. Andy McDowell feels like the person you cast when you want to forget that there's a woman in the leading role. Because, like, I've never remembered her in any movie mm -hmm. I've ever seen her in. I don't remember her name. I barely... I, her face is forgettable. Like, I don't, I don't think she was the right casting choice for this. I think she just has, like, a generic face with generic hair. Cur like back in what this came out in the 80s or 90s this was 93 93 yeah like just very generic like you could go out somewhere and just pick the same woman with the same facial features and the same hair so it wasn't memorable like if it if it was say who was popular in the 90s um, i mean there were there were various different people like my my issue isn't so much the actual look of the actress. I think Andy McDowell is perfectly fine. Like, I, mm -hmm. no, nothing nothing against her in any way. But, like, she just doesn't do enough performance-wise. She doesn't, like, bring anything to the table. But is you that know? the script, do you think? They gave her so Maybe? many little lines because Bill Murray was in this movie and he kind of took over? Maybe. I honestly don't know. Um, and I don't know who I would cast. I mean... You know, initially I think like Sally Field, but I think she may have been a little too old for what they were going for at the time. Maybe uh, like Kim Cattrall or something like that. But I, again, I don't know who they would have cast. It would have been funny if it was Sigourney Weaver again, because mm -hmm. Bill Murray and Sigourney Weaver from Ghostbusters. But yeah, or maybe someone that he's had chemistry with before. 
but I, the, again, I just didn't get anything out of her performance this time. She was very wooden, and mm -hmm. I didn't feel any chemistry between her and Bill. She, she was very stiff, like by the script. She didn't want to put any flair on what she was saying. Bill Murray puts, puts flair on his sentences and how he reacts and stuff like that. Like, um, comparing actors would be like Andrew Garfield. You can in Spider-Man 2, Hugh has the mask on, but you, you can see how vivid he is with his motions and you don't need to see his face to see what how he is reacting to it. And that's how I feel Burm, Bill Murray is too. You don't you can cover you can close your eyes and Bill Murray will give you those performances where it's like, "Oh, he's happy here. He's sad here." He can change his tone of voice, which I don't think the two supporting cast can I, they, they probably can do this, but they didn't. It was just too, like you said, cardboard cutouts are very stiff. Yeah. And speaking of also uh, Chris Elliott, who plays Larry, which you got the name right. Um, yes. <laughs> which means, hey, it's a little bit more memorable than you thought. Oh, yeah. um, again, he just plays the generic douche side character, but he's only like a douchebag because, you know, Bill's a douchebag to him. Mm hmm. And he's there like i like again it could have been anyone mm -hmm. like it could it could like it could have been someone i mean maybe chris elliott was a bigger actor back in the day i don't know i was i wasn't even born when the movie came out so i i can't tell you if he was a big actor at the time mm -hmm. but it just feels like they cast some like a, a d-list actor to be in the supporting role and it just it, it didn't work he literally has like maybe a hand like two handfuls of lines in this whole movie and they're just repeated half the time and it's just, that that's see i don't know if that's his fault that's like this the script or something like that i mean a good actor can take one line that's and make it memorable that's true and, that's I, true. and I would argue the scene in question for me, though, where I think that it shows a little bit of promise is when Phil starts doing the right things again. And he brings the coffee and the donuts to them right before the airing. And he actually starts talking to Larry. And mm -hmm. again, like, you start to see the, the, the good parts of the screenplay there and how Larry was reacting. And in a better actor's hands, I would have felt the weight of that personality change way more. I just mm -hmm. like I, I can I can feel what they're going for, but mm -hmm. I, it's not like landing. It's not sticking. You know, the 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 Nerf dart isn't sticking with the suction cup. If that makes sense. Yeah, and and I would I would have liked to seen Bill, Bill's character and Larry, have a day together so we could get to know Larry more. We got to know um, what is the girl's name? Rita. Rita. We got to know Rita well because she's in it throughout the whole movie pretty much. But Larry is just he's just Larry. I don't get in like would I care if Larry died in this movie? No. Not at all. I didn't get anything that's like oh my gosh that's so sad. He left his kids and stuff. It's like no he's he's just Larry. Also the point when Bill Murray drives off the cliff in the quarry and Larry just sits there keep feeling like oh darn and then just keeps Mm -hmm. like filming like they never established that he hated Phil that much no that felt out of working, nowhere working for him for like two three years they went to the same place so it's not like like if okay if I had a co-worker which I didn't really like mm -hmm. but they did something drastic I would be very upset still even though I didn't like like their worth ethics and stuff like that it would still have an impact on me not yeah. Oh darn! You still respect it, them, like you exactly. Just, you just don't like or agree with them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's yeah. a, it. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> we gotta change the topic for uh, uh -huh. Kevin here. Um, so one of the other things that I'm not like too keen on in this movie, or I guess maybe uh, gets a little annoying every once in a while, is obviously the movie is repetitive. That you know, to, to critique this movie and say it's repetitive is probably like. Film and film analysis suicide uh, <laughs> because it's the whole point of the movie. But sometimes, like the scenes that they pick to do repetitiveness of, gets a little annoying. I would say, I would say they show one too many scenes where he's trying to get the date right. Mm -hmm. You know, or, 
or where he's hitting the alarm clock. Don't really need to show that. Him going up to the guy that's coming up the stairs and saying different things to him every single time. Not not necessary. Yeah, um, the little ones, like like the guy mm-hmm. on the stairs, you can show that on the original day, and then you show that the first repeated day, and then maybe later on when he starts changing his attitude. You don't need to show mm-hmm. that every time. Similar mm-hmm. with the woman down in the kitchen. I mean, mm-hmm. unless you're going for a joke, right? You know, mm-hmm. if you're just repeating the scene and being like, didn't we talk yesterday? That's fine the first time. But if it gets mm-hmm. to the point where like, Bill Murray just walks out of the room and just sucker punches the guy in the face, that would have been something that would have been worth repeating because yeah. it would have been a physical comedy joke. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, I feel like they repeat one too many things for, like, the things that don't really matter. Yeah, exactly. It's like, um, well, I was going to say the guy coming up the stairs. We don't even know his name. Yeah. He's just a... It, probably in the credits, it's guy up walking upstairs. That's what he's credited for. Yep. So, but it's like, yeah, like that couldn't... Should be like, okay, we'll put him in twice. Then in the middle when he does his little French um, saying and stuff like that. Or downstairs in the lobby where she's talking to the hotel owner. And he's like, hmm, I like my coffee black. And then just takes the whole thing. But it's the same thing. Oh, do you want your coffee? Oh, here's some toast and stuff. It's like, change. I would change it up a little bit. Like, have him grab some fruit. Be like, man, I love bananas with the peel on it or something like that. <laughs> like, that would have been funny. Just eat it, like, straight out of Sea of Thieves. It's, just, like, yeah. <laughs> straight mm-hmm. in the mouth. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, the only... You know, speaking of, like, not knowing the names of any characters. Like, for how much time he spends getting to know everyone... The fact that we don't know anyone's names except for Phil, maybe Larry, if you're lucky to remember Larry. The only other name I remember is Ned Ryerson, who's the the insurance salesman. Just because that is such an iconic scene, it's an iconic moment of the movie. Um, he is so annoying. Such an annoying... That's the point! I know, but he, he really <laughs> irked me. <laughs> <laughs> After, like, the second time... Because if, if you've ever met anyone like that ever Mm -hmm. it is Mm -hmm. the most awkward experience you'll ever see yeah we were in that one class and he actually he he makes fun of it later when when uh phil is trying to get with that one woman and then like learns her name and then the Mm -hmm. next day comes back Mm -hmm. like we were in this class together yeah like i don't don't know it's it's so like one of my biggest pet peeves and this is a personal one don't get me wrong like i don't expect anyone to maybe agree with me on this but like social situations like that really make me cringe and it's very uncomfortable for me to watch. And it's almost like a, I don't want to say like a phobia thing, but I just, I have to look away when things like that happen. They're so uncomfortable. Well, it's too, it's awkward. It's exactly. like, oh, I know you. Are you sure you have the right person? And stuff like that. It's like, oh, like, I, I don't know. Do you know me? Do I not know you? Stuff like that. Because some people will, um, like, at work, they'll be like, I know you from somewhere. And I go, I highly doubt that. <laughs> so, and they go, oh, you you worked at Best Buy, and go never worked at Best Buy, so you don't know me. <laughs> and you're like, I don't talk to people, so I don't know who you yeah. are. Um, <laughs> I don't like human beings. That would be really funny if you ever said that. <laughs> you humans are gross. <laughs> I live with cats <laughs> <laughs> or groundhogs in this case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, like, but yeah, Ned's the only character that stands out because he's written to be annoying and to stand out which again the joke when like he's like phil ned and then just soccer punches mm-hmm. him was fantastic and it was so mm-hmm. cathartic or the one where mm-hmm. he's like actually super friendly and ned thinks he's hitting on him is that yeah. that one's fantastic i need to try that with anyone that comes to my door uh it's a great <laughs> way to get people to not uh come back to your house um yeah. but i mean again i wish i wish he would do some more stuff with the groundhog, like when he kidnapped him and took him into the truck. But like play on that another day, like he kidnaps him, brings him into the hotel, like gets to know him pretty much. That would be funny. Hey, Phil like, and takes Phil. A, Phil and Phil taking around town, taking a stroll, joy ride, stuff, stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe that's our modern sensibilities coming in. Maybe that mm-hmm. wasn't something that would have been considered funny back in the 90s, but you never know. I mean, it, this movie does feel a little bit more a product of its time than anything else we've watched so far. So, you know, you, usually comedies do. 
you know, they feel like they're a product of their times because they are. All right, so that being said, uh, let's go ahead and go over our scores real quick, what we thought of the film, and uh, just kind of overall, you know, again, what we're thinking score-wise. Uh, so what did you give the film? So on Letterboxd, I gave it a three stars out of five, and that was really because of Bill Murray's performance. Everybody else couldn't care less about, but his performance made it a three-star movie. And I have heard great things about this movie before I saw it, so it was kind of overhyped a little bit in my eyes um, because it was like, oh my gosh, this is a great comedy. I'm like, had some comedy in it, but it was actually like real life. But um, yeah, three stars out of five. Um, would I watch it again? Possibly if it's on TV and I try not to fall asleep. But um, maybe I'll get in a stuck in a loop then. But probably not. All right. Yeah, I mean, if I ever like, if I ever went through and did like a serious analysis of the film, I mean, this is probably one that I would want to do just because of the deeper, like, philosophical and spiritual meanings behind the film. But mm -hmm. I, could, I mean, I could see myself watching this again. Um, I did give it a slightly higher score. I did give it a three point five out of five on Letterboxd, uh, but I gave it I, I gave it everything a score out of one hundred, so I gave it a seventy eight. Um, I said that it's heartfelt, funny, and decidedly deeper. Uh, it's a decidedly deeper film than you may expect. Uh, Bill Murray is the true star here, uh, and the only thing that holds the film back is how uninteresting and boring everyone else is. Uh, sometimes the repetitiveness of certain scenes can be grating, but the jokes still land and the heart is still there. So, 78 out of 100. Again, that's not a bad score by any means. It's just, it's fine. Um, it's not, like, my favorite comedy ever, but it was still fun. So the question now falls to you. What did you think of Groundhog Day? We'd love to hear what you have to think in the comments down below, but remember to be respectful of one another. Next week, we'll be covering the multiple award-winning drama, Parasite. So make sure you watch the film before next week to make sure you are not spoiled when we talk about the film, because there is a lot to spoil with Parasite. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here on YouTube, and follow us on social media at Real Watchers Everywhere. And until then, keep your eyes on the screen.